If you are like me and you couldn't resist the temptation of those beautiful 10th edition Tyranids and Space Marine models, you might already have one of those Leviathan boxes or maybe a starter set already sitting on your shelf. And similarly to me, chances are that you haven't even started painting them yet. But today we are going to fix that, at least for the Tyranids. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. Thanks to one of my viewers, I found the perfect scheme that I would want to use for my Tyranid army, which is High Fleet Behemoth. When it comes down to it, Tyranids are just big bugs, right? Pretty terrifying ones and you don't want to encounter them, but bugs nonetheless. And in my head, bugs are nice and colorful. Yeah, sure, there are a lot of not so colorful ones as well, but that's not how I imagined them. So I wanted my Tyranids to be also nice and colorful. And High Fleet Behemoth is perfect for this. It's vibrant red and bluish green. Awesome. So in today's video I'm going to show you how I painted up my benchmark model for this army. The one that I painted to the highest possible standard that I want to use in this army and then I can scale it back or up as much as I want. So if you follow along you will be able to see how I use contrast paints over a zenithal highlight to do the first part of the paint job which is just all the main details, all the main colors applied. So if you want to just mass produce these and want to batch paint your whole army, you can just do this part and you are set. Then the next section is going to be a set of details that you can add to the original scheme to make it a little bit more detailed and more interesting, but you can still achieve it with, let's say, 90% contrast paints. And finally, I'm going to show you how I highlighted this model to a higher standard with acrylics in the end. This is something that is completely optional. If you want to get your models to more like a parade ready standard than just tabletop ready, then you can do this stage or you can just skip it. All right, let's get painting. I'm going to be using contrast paints and your first reaction at this point is probably that then you need to prime this in a very bright color, something close to white. But actually, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend priming it black first. And you see me using an airbrush here because that's my preferred method, but of course you can also use a retro can to achieve the same thing. And you do need a bright undercoat for the contrast paints to work, but we are going to achieve that with a zenithal highlight. And once again, I'm using the airbrush here with just some diluted white paint. But if you don't own an airbrush, that's not a big problem. You can just use two retro cans, first a black one and then on top of that a white one. The reason why I think this is better than just pure white primer is because this is going to allow you to have natural transitions over all the armor panels and all the surfaces that the model has. And the end result is going to be a much more realistic looking model as opposed to something that just looks like a toy. And to achieve this, the only thing you need to do is to make sure that the model is fully covered white from the top and partially from the sides. Just make sure that you leave the undersides dark. All right, so with all the preparations, the priming, the highlighting done, let's move on to the fun part, which is to get some contrast on this model. Let's tackle the first big color in the Behemoth color scheme, which is this really strong and vibrant red. I'm going to be using Blood Angels Red for this, which is probably my favorite color in the whole Citadel contrast paint range. And I'm going to be painting this all over the body of this bug. So everything that is not the carapace and not the hooves and not the claws, it's going to be red. I'm not going to care about some of the smaller elements that I'm going to obscure with this for now because later I will use a little trick to bring those back so that I can use another contrast color on them. For now I only care about two things, speed and consistency. Speed because I want to use this method to paint a lot of models so it cannot take me a long time and consistency because I will need to cover all the white otherwise later it will look really weird. And to achieve this, I'm using a pretty big brush. This is actually a size 3 brush from Artis Opus. And the trick here is that you need the big brush because it will hold a lot of paint. And if you want to have a nice result with contrast paints, what you need to do is basically to flood the surface that you want to paint. I see a lot of people making the mistake of trying to use contrast paints the same way they would use normal acrylics. They try to use a small brush, not even fully loaded, and then go for thin coats, slowly applying it to the surface. And if you do that, the end result is going to look like a terrible streaky mess. So instead what you need to do is you have to take a big brush, load it fully, apply it to the surface, let it flood the surface so that it reaches all the little crevices. And then if you see that it's pulling too much, you can just soak it up a little bit later once there is not that much paint in the brush anymore. My usual workflow goes something like this. First, I load the brush either directly from the pot or from the wet pellet. Then I start painting it onto the mini and it will probably be a little bit too much on the surface so I will let it pool because I know that it takes a lot of time for the contrast paint to dry. Then at some point I will notice that the brush doesn't have enough paint anymore to completely flood the surface. Then I go back to the previously painted surface where the paint is still pooling and soak it up from the pools. 
which allows me to paint a little bit more before I have to load the brush fully from the pot or from the wet palette again. But regardless whether you use a small or a big brush, and I hope that you use a big one, you are going to make some mistakes. But fortunately for us, they are super easy to correct because you can just go back with a little bit of white or whitish paint and correct everything that you spilled over the surfaces that should not be red. Just be mindful that if you do this over a surface that was not fully white, let's say it's on the other side of the model or somewhere close, then you might still have a big color difference between the original color and this one, and you don't really want that. So if you can, try to avoid touching something that is not supposed to be that color. So that red already looks gorgeous, but now we need the second color that is the main color of the behemoth scheme. And this one is a bit tricky because normally what you would do is that you just paint everything black and then highlight up with something that is close to blue. But I really wanted these bugs to be quite vibrant and colorful, and if I do a black carapace, that's not gonna really achieve that. So instead what I did is I used Pterodon Turquoise and added Black Legion to it. Something like 60 to 30%. So 60 would be the turquoise and 30 the black. Depending on what you want you can manipulate this to just have turquoise if you really want something super colorful or you can go a little bit more dark and just add a little bit of turquoise into your black. Once I was satisfied with the color, I applied it across all the armor panels of this bug and made sure that I cover everything that is white, otherwise it would look really weird having these white spots on the armor. With the two main colors done, now I need just a couple more colors to have this guy fully covered. I used Wildwood for all the claws and the hooves. Once again, the original very basic color scheme would have these in black, but I wanted to have at least a little bit of color here as well, so I opted for this really dark brown. I used Skeleton Horde for the teeth but honestly I could have just used Wildwood here as well and that would have further simplified the scheme which is probably what I'm going to do for the next ones. I use Magus Purple for this tentacle-like thing that connects him to his gun. On some of the other models, like for example the Neuro Tyrants, I use the same color to highlight their brains and that will tie together the whole army. Finally I used Volapus Pink for his tongue, but once again I could have used the Magus Purple as well just to simplify things, it's just not as vibrant as this one. The only thing left was to paint his eyes because I think even for the very basic color scheme at least you need to paint the eyes in. For this one I actually used a smaller brush and painted in the eye with white. After that I just dropped a little bit of warp lightning into the eye socket that meant that it hit everything around the white as well as the white itself which produced this glowing effect. Even if you don't want to spend a lot of time on highlighting, just having the models next to each other like this, just with the contrast paint, they look pretty good. But let's move on to the second stage and let's add a couple more details, a little bit more visual interest into the model. Let's go back to that white wood and let's drop it into the joints. Fortunately these are really nicely sculpted and it's easy to put the contrast paint into it with a relatively smaller brush but I think you could even achieve this with the size 3 if you really wanted to. Next I took a little bit of off-white and reclaimed some of the surface that I covered with the original blood red. I wanted to have this glowing element on the gun that is the same color as the eye. But there are also a lot of these openings on the side of the gun but also on the arms and the legs that I wanted to paint in a similar but different tone from the rest of the body. There are quite a few of these openings around the model so just take your time and make sure that you find all of them for consistency's sake. With this done I covered all of them in Yandan yellow. The idea behind this was that I wanted to have something that stands out from the red but I didn't want it to be completely different so that it's very stark in contrast because I want that contrast to exist mostly between the carapace and the body and that was already there. Finally I used the same warp lightning that I used for the eyes for this glowing element of the gun as well. And with that the second stage is complete and honestly if I had to paint an army really fast this is probably what I would do. I would not stop at the first stage because that's a little bit too plain and simple but after this one, even though I only use contrast paints, they already look quite detailed and really cool and they have this vibrancy and color that I wanted. But if you are like me and you are not satisfied with just contrast, you actually want to use acrylics to make the model way more readable and just cool in general, then this is what comes next. And I started with the carapace, thinking that I need to do something about the color because I wanted to go a little bit more towards blue than what the turquoise did for me. And I know that on the tin it actually said sauté green, but sauté green is quite bluish, at least to my eyes, so I decided that this would be the perfect color for achieving that. It's not fully blue, but it's more blue than the original color that we had. 
And fortunately, these 300 models are extremely well sculpted. So all I needed to do was to follow the edges of the sculpt. And fortunately, at this stage, you don't even need to be very thin with this paint because there's going to be other colors in this scheme that are going to be thinner and those need to fit into those highlights still. So don't worry about being too thin with this. Then I switched to Temple Guard Blue and I made sure that this one is a little bit thinner and I used it on less of the edges. It's very important that the previous color still is visible after this highlight because otherwise you can just use this and completely forego the previous one. But to be honest, this model is extremely easy to practice edge highlights on because it's so well sculpted and there are so many very, very obvious details on it. If you paint a couple of dozen of these dudes uh, and you do all the edge highlights, after you're done, you're probably going to be a pro at it. Finally, I added a little bit of off-white into my Temple Guard Blue and used it very sparingly only on the most prominent edges and only on the ones facing up. This is the point where it's really worth trying to go for really thin lines. So make sure that you don't have a lot of paint on your brush and that you apply very little pressure. With the armor finished, let's move on to the body. For the first highlight here, I used Wild Rider Red because the base coat that we achieved with the Blood Angels Red is very similar to something like Mephiston Red. The trick here is that unlike the armor, the body is not so easily highlighted because yes, there are some ridges and there are some edges, but there are also some highlights here that were left behind by the contrast paint that are not obviously on one of these spots. So what I was trying to achieve was not to destroy the contrast highlights that were created by the contrast paints, but to emphasize them. I was looking for all the brighter spots that were left behind by the contrast and try to put this wild rider red in there to make them even more contrasty, but without covering them fully. Just try to be careful if you do this and try to remember that less is sometimes more. The huge advantage of contrast paints and especially this Blood Angels Red that I used here is that it's super saturated, super vibrant. But as soon as I start highlighting it with something like Wild Rider Red that has a little bit of white in it to make it brighter, it will take away from the saturation. So the trick is to create this kind of balance where you still have highlights, but they are small enough that they don't cover the previous color. You still have the majority of the model covered by the Blood Angels Red, and you still have this feeling of super huge vibrancy and saturation, while there are also very bright highlights at the same time. And after the wider the red, I went with Troll Slayer Orange as my final highlight, because this is an orange tone and that's Perfectly fine if you are okay with your reds turning a little bit into orange, which I was really happy with here. And it doesn't desaturate the model as much because it has mostly orange rather than white in it. And once again, I use this very sparingly only inside the highlights that I created previously with the white rider red. And finally, the one big element that was left was all the brown parts. So the hooves, the claws and the carapace on the gun. But fortunately, these are way easier to highlight than the body itself because they have very obvious edge highlighting opportunities on them. So I took Zandy Dust as my first highlight color and I highlighted all these edges and ridges as well as added a couple of small scratches here and there to make it a little bit cooler. For these parts I mostly just used the Zandy Dust and I felt that's enough but occasionally where I felt that an edge merits a little bit more highlighting I added a tiny bit of off-white into my Zandy Dust and used that. Finally I also highlighted the weird tentacle thing that goes into the gun a little bit with the off-white and added a bit more detail to the eyes and the glowing bit on the gun. And by that I mean that I added a tiny bit of white into the center of the eye and into the center of the glowy bit on the gun and then used Tessera Glow over it. The idea being that that has a little bit more yellow and it would create more of a glow effect, but this was probably overkill, honestly. Before I could call it a day, I still needed to come up with a base that then I could replicate across the whole army. I had already applied some terrain texture from Scale 75 called Winter Ground on the base, but this was quite flat, so I needed to do something about that. So I took some Zenzi dust and just dry brushed it onto the base. If you want to be smarter than me, then maybe do this before the model is painted so that you don't risk smudging it with it. After the dry brushing was done, I painted Gorgon to fur on it. I painted the rim black, added some tufts and called it a day. And the end result looks like this.
To be honest, I was pretty happy with the model. So happy, in fact, that I already started painting the rest of the army and I am at various stages of completeness with them. I might have to come up with a way to paint the big monsters without contrast paints where it wouldn't work so well on the big armor panels, but at least for the small ones and the mid-sized ones, it actually works quite well. But what do you guys think? Would you use this method for your own army? Would you need something that's a bit faster or something that produces better results? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching the video and staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel for similar content. See you in the next one.